It's a classic autumn night in the state capital of the Lone Star State for a showdown between two old rivals that have been going at it since 1901. Welcome to Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Tonight a matchup the Big 12 South 25th ranked Baylor taking on the Longhorns of Texas and eight weeks ago no one could have predicted that Baylor would be on top of the Big 12 South but the rest they are looking up now at the Bears. Hi everybody, Joel Myers alongside Joel Klatt. Welcome to Austin. They are truly the surprise of the entire Big 12. Bowl eligible Joel Klatt for the first time since 1995 for the Baylor Bears. And the reason, RG3, what a playmaker. One of the very best in the country, Robert Griffin. Well, I tell you what, this guy, I love his maturation process from year one in 2008 when really he was a running quarterback. And now he's added passing to his repertoire. This guy is a sensational passer, quick release, and his ability to throw the football is what ultimately has led to the offensive success for Baylor and the big plays that Texas has got to limit here tonight. RG3, quite simply, he's a Heisman candidate, and even Mac Brown will tell you so. He means that much to the Baylor Bears. Well, the Texas Longhorns, what a rarity. They come in off back-to-back -back home losses for the first time since Mac Brown took over 13 years ago. Offensively, incredibly incredible consistent the defense so that's another story they have shown up this year they really have even a couple of weeks ago uh, up in Lincoln Nebraska when they played so well against that fast Nebraska team they've got to play to that same level here tonight against Baylor they got to play great in space for Will Muschamp and the lead guy for them Sam Ocho the senior defensive end he's got to play fantastic here tonight because he will be on that island in the zone read game with Robert Griffin the entire game he's their best player he's their leader and he has to be that guy tonight if Texas wants to beat Baylor in their home stadium as usual 100,000 119 at Texas Memorial <laughs> Stadium as Colt McCoy has Jersey number 12 retired only five other Longhorns have accomplished that honor so a treat for all of us to be here for Big 12 College Football Saturday all presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors stay with us great show down to the Big 12 South Baylor and Texas coming up next it's a series that started back in 1901 and it continues on this late October evening 2010 as the Texas Longhorns make their way out of the tunnel. And Art Bryles in his third year after a very successful run as the head coach of the Houston Cougars with RG3 right by his side. I don't blame him. Stay right there and he's here. Robert Griffin the third and the toss one by Mac Brown's side but they have deferred their option to the second half so Baylor is going to have the football first in such a rarity and we just heard from Mac Brown in our report from Jim Knox it's easy when you go 25 and 2 in consecutive seasons so Justin Tucker is ready to kick it away the junior from right here Austin Westlake High School Mikhail Baker back deep along with Lanier Sampson and we are just about ready to go in Austin Texas College football Saturday. And what a kick over the head of Baker. And a first and ten for RG3. And the Baylor Bears at their own 20 yard line. And how hot is Robert Griffin over the last four? The month of October has been amazing for Baylor, averaging 603 yards a game. You look at his season numbers over the last four, he is averaging 350 yards a game passing. Jay Finley more involved the guy we'll talk about in the backfield but Robert Griffin the third Mac Brown said it best he should be considered strongly for the Heisman Trophy for what he's done this year for the Baylor Bears to first and 10 to the 20 out of the edge and a little comeback for Williams so it falls incomplete right there for the sophomore for Dallas and we mentioned Jay Finley but the offensive line has picked it up and according to the offensive corner well Danny Watkins the left tackle he sets the tone for the entire offensive line Jay Finley comes in the tailback off a record setting day the best in bear history 250 yards rushing last week in their win at 47 to 42 on their home field so after the drop on first and 10 a check off at the line Special teams have also been outstanding this year. Zone Reed, Griffin out on the edge and can't break away from Shockey Brown, the senior from Houston. 
And over there as well, Christian Scott, the safety, the junior from Dallas's Skyline High School. Defensively, in the call it a 4 2 5. Both Achos out there. Sam, phenomenal season. Emmanuel, he's been nicked up a little bit. And in the secondary, we just saw the safety, Scott. You'll see Shockey Brown in the corner. Also, Curtis Brown. With all that experience for the two seniors that are three year starters on the corners. And honorable mention all Big 12 last year for Curtis Brown. It'll be second and ten from the 45. Opening two minutes of play. We're scoreless at Texas Memorial Stadium. Daryl Royal Field. And what a sight on a beautiful night. Finley scrambles his way up the middle into the secondary. And what a save by Acho. Got him low and held on for dear life. Safety was coming over a little bit late though. Keenan Robinson too. If you don't see a lot of defenders in the middle of the field for Texas, it's because of this system from Baylor. Spreading them out and then getting downhill in the running game like Finley and Griffin both like to do when they run the football. But that's why they're so hard to defend. You gotta be on the outside for the bubble screen and then they crease you right up the middle with the run. Jay Finley with more yardage over the last two games than he had in the first six for the Baylor Bears. And it shows early right past Griffin. Not a bad snap. He lost his concentration and then he loses his footing thanks to Sam Acho. And did it get taken away? Yes! Ball came loose. Acho made the play. And Texas covers it. The snap. Not a bad snap, Joel. Just like you said, it's just to the side. You got to handle that as a quarterback. But then Acho comes in, Ooh, he actually trips, trips him. him and gets away with it. <laughs> the ball comes out. Absolutely gets away with it. Ball was out before Griffin hits the ground, but Texas gets away with a trip there from Sam Acho and gets the football which is not what they've been doing all season long this defense has not created turnovers like they have in the past it's one of the reasons why they're sitting here at four and three in the middle of the season yeah they led the nation in interceptions last year came in 106 out of 120 teams in turnover ratio plus minus margin and now on first down big hole up the middle and on the handoff over to the right side actually on the little reverse action they gave it to the wide receiver and it goes for good yardage John Childs on the reverse the former quarterback came here as a quarterback I will not be surprised at all if Greg Davis empties the playbook here tonight they've come under a lot of fire offensively here in Austin now Garrett Gilbert throwing for the first time and a dart taken in and it's a first down to Malcolm Williams, a junior from Garland. He's right at the marker, should have it inside the 29. Garrett Gilbert has got to be more efficient tonight if they want to beat Baylor. That touchdown to interception ratio of six to eight has got to get better. You have to take care of the football as a quarterback. It's your primary objective, along with getting first downs and touchdowns. If he starts to protect the ball better, they will start to put up more points as an offense. Starting in plus territory. And out of the backfield. Scrambling inside the 29, close to the 28 is Monroe. DJ Monroe, the running back. And the offensive line. Left side, the most experienced, the senior with 35 starts, Kyle Hicks, the left tackle. Newton was going to get the start. We've already seen Monroe. They'll use Whitaker and Cody Johnson. They haven't settled on one back, though. Three have rotated. Newton, Whitaker, and Johnson, and now in the mix, DJ Monroe. Over to the left side, Kobe. Nothing out there. So on the short side is Monroe once again. And our Phillips starting 11 defensively. Phil Taylor, he's kind of the man in the middle of the senior from Clinton, Maryland, who transferred from Penn State. Linebackers, Francis Antonio Johnson, the senior from Waco. And Odom gets the start. You might remember his father, Cliff, Clifton Odom. He is starting for the injured chance Casey on the corner. Now Trey Newton into the backfield. A regular on third and just about seven. We're scoreless early. Four and a half minutes gone by. Gilbert with time. And to the wide side. Not enough for the first down unless and he did. He got the flag and it may have been on the face mat. Kirkendall made the catch. The senior from Round Rock. Just a few minutes outside of town. After the runner was down. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the defense number seven. Half the distance of the goal. First down. So half the distance to the goal after the takeover, starting in Baylor territory. This is your basic curl flat combination. 
And Gilbert delivers a strike to Kirkendall, but Antonio Johnson, the linebacker, number seven, comes in late, leads with the head, all of those things. And now the sensitive age of football that we live in, in the NFL and college football alike, that's going to draw a flag 100% of the time. Just a break that goes your way. You got to capitalize. And that's what this offense has got to do now in a first and goal situation is get seven. Get this ball in the end zone if you're Texas. They're on Kirkendall in motion to the short side. Give it to Trey Newton, same side. And they're on his back in a hurry. Coming up quickly. And there were a couple there, but Byron Lander, the strong safety, a hard hitter, good run support. Rodney Chadwick as well. No gain on that carry for Trey Newton. Statistically, Texas doesn't look like they're running the ball very well. Greg Davis told us it's been the style of game that has led them into throwing the ball more like being behind Iowa State a week ago. He wants to establish that run early and keep Robert Griffin off the field. DJ Monroe comes into the game and comes into motion into the backfield. Will he get it? No. Gilbert out of the edge, looking for the back of the end zone, in and out of the hands, and almost intercepted. He had Barrett Matthews. It should have been caught. And it falls, fortunately for Texas, incomplete. Francis looked like he could have come up with a pick. Too many plays like this from Texas this year. Not taking advantage of your opportunity. This ball is absolutely thrown perfectly from Garrett Gilbert. It's got to be caught by Matthews. That is six points that comes off the scoreboard because of a lack of concentration and inconsistent play, which is exactly what has hurt Texas in their three losses this year. But now can they capitalize on such a short field or do they settle for three? It'll be third and goal outside of the nine. Here comes the heat. Gilbert scramble mode, corner of the end zone, up for grabs and out of the end zone, even though it was taken in by Kirkendall. Well, the heat all of a sudden flushed and kind of put Garrett Gilbert into a scramble situation where he was flustered. Yeah, it's a risk reward proposition to blitz this close and he's clearly out of bounds as you see on the replay but when you decide to blitz inside the 10 you've got to have ultimate faith in your outside guys your athletes on the outside that they can go mano a mano with Texas Baylor clearly feels like they can do that so they dial up a pressure and they get Garrett Gilbert to move his feet a little bit probably throw a pass that he doesn't want to ends up out of bounds you saw the numbers for Justin Tucker. It's a 26 yard attempt and points off the turnover. But to Baylor's credit, they minimize the damage. So Justin Tucker with a 26 yard field goal. Matthews, though, could have had six for the Longhorns. Well, Mac Brown wins 90% of the time when he scores first in his 13 years in Texas. So Baylor uphill, but not that bad when you consider who was taken at the 39 away from Robert Griffin. Mikhail Baker, Lanier Sampson again, and a nice boot by Tucker. And Baylor, for the second consecutive time, will have it first and 10 at their own 20. How tough is it for Baylor to win in Austin? All time. They have eight wins, 43 losses, and two ties. Not a great percentage. Yeah, but now they've got Robert Griffin. That's they, the equalizer. You see what he did last week. Throws for a high percentage, 400 yards, and his... Again, maturation as a passer is what has made this Baylor offense so effective and efficient scoring points. They're averaging over 42 points a game in Big 12 contests. 47-42 win over Kansas State. Salubi in the backfield set up the screen. And he's, well, he needed that block. He gets that block, and he may be going down the sideline. Still a first down. And a good job over on that side of the field by Christian Scott, the safety. Otherwise, Joel, I think it's a touchdown. Well, they do a great job of faking the bubble screen to the right and then releasing those linemen in the back over. But you're right, Christian Scott, if he gets chopped down, that's going to go probably the distance. There was nobody there, but because Finley had to slow down and avoid Christian Scott, the pursuit was able to get there for Texas. It'll be first and 10 outside of the 37. Zone read for Griffin. And a little dart resourceful isn't he gets it to Josh Gordon thought he was going to run it they took away his first option it looked like the H backer tied in and he finds Gordon uh, that's what makes him so tough is he keeps his eyes down the field as a quarterback if you've got world-class speed like like Griffin you keep your eyes down the field you just put those defenders in such a tough spot do they come up and defend the run or do they stay with their man in pass coverage he will beat you regardless of the decision you make it'll be Finley in the backfield They've got the sledgehammer in there. Anytime you see 49 in the game, look out. 
300 pounder. Cuero, Texas, K. Ron Johnson. He's definitely their K factor. Setting up on the hip of the right tackle. Need a little more than three. Griffin looking back, and he's got it for the first down. And will he stay in bounds? No. Out of bounds, Tevin Reese, the true freshman from Temple, Texas. What a little dart by Griffin. How about the accuracy on the run? Everything starts with the zone read from Baylor. In order to get the second level and the linebackers up closer to the line of scrimmage, that's how Tevin Reese can get behind them into an open area for the first down. But the dart thrown by Griffin, you're seeing him throw the ball as good as anybody in the country. And with his world-class speed, that's why he should be mentioned and, and in the discussion when you're talking about Heisman Trophy candidates. And Robert Griffin now 4 of 6 to start the game 43 early passing yards first and 10 25 yard line of Texas underneath Reese trying to make a miss which he does he's a make a miss guy as the coaches tell us and he's got nine and check that it was Josh Gordon 12 not 16 as we head down to Jim Knox Knoxie all right Joe I tell you what Robert Griffin off to a hot start talked to him before the game and he told me believe it or not he's a better quarterback this year basically for sitting out most of last year he said he was on the sidelines got to see more of the game got to learn and the game actually slowed down for him it's the 10th play of the drive coming up to the Bears that started back at their own 20 well they have to settle for a field goal try. Bunch of on the wide side, three over there, and the inside guy, he's got it, but he's short of the first down. Kendall Wright, the junior from Pittsburgh, Texas. So the field goal unit coming on, and what a field goal unit has been. The accuracy and the distance on display tonight. The redshirt freshman from Crowley, Texas, Aaron Jones, as Robert Griffin discusses what he saw and what Art Bryles was thinking. It was the second down play that led to this. He did not put air on that ball. That's why Vaccaro blocked it down. It's tough to convert third and anything over five when you're inside the 15 yard line. So Jones in to tie it up. It'll be a 24 yard attempt and he is now 17 of 21. A guy who has made more field goals this year for Baylor already than they've had in the two previous seasons combined. Tied at three in the Lone Star State is the Bears and the Longhorns. Welcome back to Austin. 3-3. We are tied in the first quarter. And look who I have here, Colt McCoy. Tell you what, Colt, uh, what a night it was for you. They retired your jersey. That has only happened to five other players at the University of Texas. What was that feeling like? Well, it was hard not to be too emotional. Um, you know, I hope it's just special to my teammates and my coaches and all the support I've had from my family and everybody, especially was to me. I, I'm, I'm thrilled, I'm excited, I'm humbled, but at the same time I know it's, it's nothing that I did. It's my teammates and coaches and, and I just thank God for giving me the opportunity to play the last four years and play well and I just hope for continued success. NCAA Division I all-time winning as quarterback with 45 wins. If you can pinpoint a game, what was your most special one? All the ones that were played in here, I would say. You know, we, we played such good football for the last four years. We had our ups and downs, but the camaraderie that we had playing for Coach Brown and Coach Davis and, and this university, I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. So that is going to be the end of the first quarter of play here in Austin, Texas, as we continue with Big 12 College Football, all presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Even so far, Who's going to break it wide open with RG3 on the premises? It's from the 39 of Baylor. Started back at the 20 of Texas where it looked like Baylor either was going to have points or the football. And wouldn't it be bizarre if Texas goes 80 yards? Johnson looking for people to hit, obviously. And he's close to a first down. He's a load of 250, the junior from Walter, Texas. So Cody Johnson. Kind of the K-Ron Johnson of Baylor for Baylor. The way Baylor uses K-Ron Johnson, their 300 pounder. Cody Johnson, a physical run. This is a mentality run. And for a team that has struggled to get that identity with their offensive line, I like the fact that they go to Cody Johnson and they just say, hey, hammer away, big fella. It'll be second and a yard. He'll stay there. And with Taylor on his back, will he get enough? Yep, he got it inside the 29. The way they've used Newton, Whitaker, and Cody Johnson, none of the three have an average of better than 40 yards per game. It's so, tough to get yeah. a rhythm. No continuity, really, from any one back. 
especially the running back position is, is similar to quarterback or more similar than any other position on the field. You got to find a rhythm and that's why sticking with one guy during a course of a series or a game is so important. Now Gilbert giving it off. It's Mike Davis on the end around and the reverse. They stayed at home. Good job by the Baylor Bears. Chadwick over on that side. And again a short gain of about three where they were looking for a home run ball from the freshman out of Dallas's Skyline High School two time all stater too close together they run the play handing it to Cody Johnson with that Fargo reverse fake to, to Davis and then they try to come right back and then they fake the handoff to Johnson and give it on the Fargo reserve reverse to Davis those are too close together right there Johnson huge hole and you need a big one for him to drive through. He's got another first down, down to the 18. Cody Johnson getting hot, and that's why he's getting the carries right now, but they will go with the hot back. Trey Newton, Cody Johnson, or Fozzie Whitaker. We've seen DJ Monroe already tonight. So Texas trying to find their rhythm in the run game. They're, they're finding that with Cody Johnson on this series. Now on second and short, Johnson. Nothing really. Maybe a yard, yard and a half. So the key third down to the drive coming up for the Longhorns. And it always gets tougher inside the red zone. Especially on third down, Joel. And as a quarterback, this is where you have to be great as a quarterback. Third and over five yards in the red zone. you got to step up and make a throw. And Gary Gilbert will be asked to do that right here for Texas. Williams looks like single coverage, bottom of your screen. Middle of the field, way behind his intended target as he tried to get it to John Giles, almost like he guided it, directed it. That's been some of the criticism. His feet get too wide apart, his base is lowered, he overstrides, and at that point, the ball gets into your palm a little bit and you start to guide it. And Garrett Gilbert does that on that last third down. Again, those are the crucial situations that you got to step up and make a throw. And Garrett Gilbert has struggled doing that during the course of this season. 909 left of the half. Tucker already good from 26. And now 14 of 17 on the year. The 31 yarder. Nice draw. Use that on the first team. Six minutes gone by in the second quarter. And boy, is it going to be on the night before Halloween a nightmare for Art Riles after a drive and a call like that? We after a Five minute drive, 12 plays, 66 yards, a 6 3 lead. The numbers on the scoring drive, and what a bizarre situation yeah, on the really bump was. punt. It really was. We talked with the replay booth, and they said because it was a punt and because the receiving team was tackled, and they, they, he, he said tackled in the end zone, they called it a touchback. Tucker gets into it. It'll be Mikhail Baker, the Bears' all time leader in kickoff return yardage, and does he ever pay? Boy, did they get downhill, and I mean downhill in a hurry. Longhorns, Aaron Smith on top of the situation. It'll be first down to the 31. And a little screen action on the outside. Reese. You heard him holler, hold him, hold him. He's out to the 36, gain of five. Yeah, Texas uh, on their sidelines, they were dying for a holding call yep. on Lanier Sampson. He had the jersey of Curtis Brown, the corner, and when Brown was unable to turn back on the outside and Baylor gained the edge, they were dying for a flag. Yeah, and it was a legitimate potter from the sideline, as you saw. So second and five. Banner averaging 35 a game, only three so far, a little more than eight to play in the half. Griffin. Like a Barishnikov back there. And now puts it on the ground. Look out. Okafor, who gets it? Okafor had the first shot. And one of the lugs up front. Good job by Banner's offensive line. Coming away with the football. Kaufold, Cameron Kaufold. And check it, not 71, but Philip Blake, the alert junior center from Toronto. 74, not 71. Robert Griffin has all day to throw. Tries to step back and throw it a second down time. 
but he's just running it just slips out of his hand and Texas unable to capitalize that's Keenan Robinson terrific outside linebacker had a chance late unable to get on the football and Baylor has some life even though it's third and ten boy that ball has got to be recovered by Texas that's why they've struggled so much gaining turnovers they just have not made plays the entire season it was first Alex Okafor and Keenan Robinson he's got to go down on top of it he tried to pick it up and run with it now Griffin in trouble and on his way down the sack and what a job coming up and making the play Eddie Jones the senior from Kilgore Texas and He's had just a few surgeries, hasn't he? He has persevered, though, to be playing at this level. Lead the team in sacks with five. Gets to the quarterback. You can see why he's got such a great motor, and he understands how to play with leverage. He's not the tallest guy in the world, so at 6'3", 260, he can play with better leverage than most of the offensive tackles and use that to his advantage to gain that edge and get to the quarterback. Now let's see if Curtis Brown does a better job of hanging under the football this time. Epperson in. He sent out a beauty last time. And another one. Good hang time. Brown took it up high. And I'm talking about high on his chest and making a miss so along the sideline across the 45 out to the midfield stripe. So I like it. Mac Brown goes right back with his senior cornerback Curtis Brown after he muffed it, put it on the ground, and they got a break on the call. And Brown rewarded him. It's down to the 38. A little waggle action. Looking for Williams, batted away, and actually John Tiles. Good read by Francis. So whatever you do, don't lighten up, Chris. This is a poor decision by Garrett Gilbert. They get that big run action. The defensive end crashes all the way down. And as the linebacker drifts back, that's where you have to run the football if you're Garrett Gilbert. And there has to be a threat when you have a run pass option on the outside. You have to show them that you have the ability and will make the decision to take off and run or else they will dip back into coverage like you saw Lander do on the last play, ultimately tipping that ball away. Very tough throw to try to throw it over that linebacker. Just take the eight yards they were giving you with the run. Gilbert on second and ten out of the gun. Dancing. And a good job by Newt to get it down to the 33. Gain of about five, but again, that mid range third down play. Last time Gilbert guided the ball, but it was in the red zone. You know, there was a lot of congestion over the middle. Well, they've gotten their rhythm running the football. They've done a nice job. Their offensive line playing physical. But now you're in that position where as a quarterback, if you're going to score points and if you're going to be efficient, you got to stand in the pocket and deliver a strike to your wide receiver. And on the outside, you got to catch the football. Only 25 percent on their third down tries. Newton, little crease, and it closed in a hurry. And then the guy you were just talking about came up to clean up, and that's Byron Lander. Boy, a third and five try to run the ball you either think it's four down territory and with Gilbert looking over to the sidelines they very might go for this very well might go for this no I, I think Tucker might run on the field but that's that's showing me a little bit of a lack of confidence in your offense running it on third and five Joel you you've got to allow your quarterback to sit in there and make a play and move the chains well I think it goes back to what Max said last week he thought his quarterback was pressing I don't see that tonight though he's played pretty well he just had a couple of drops yeah, he said it, the game kind of speeded up on Garrett Gilbert for the first time this year to that extent Tucker now a 49 yard attempt and boy that's good from about 60. Wow. Justin Tucker get it out of your system junior from Austin Westlake High School a 49 yarder easily done nine three Longhorns it's a game of catch up for RG three Robert Griffin and the Baylor Bears our Geico coach tonight it comes from that young man the Baylor quarterback Al bowl eligible for the first time since 95 and the AP top 25 for the first time since 93 coaches poll first time since 95 a lot of firsts and it's yeah. good to see for the Baylor Bears. Well I, I thought last year they were going to have a year like this with Griffin back after that sensational freshman year and Joel it just happened a year late after that knee injury to Robert Griffin a, a season ago. It's Baker bringing it back. And boy Mikhail Baker nifty moves to make a miss out across the 30 to the 31. Three wide receivers setting up for Robert Griffin out of the gun. Finley in the backfield with him. And first and 20. Finley torpedoed after a gain of about two. And you got to think maybe a timeout from Texas, too. 
as we head down to Jim Knox. All right, Joel, you know one thing the Baylor Bears are looking at right here is do not make mistakes. Don't turn the ball over. And something the Baylor coach is trying to instill in Robert Griffin, the motto being needy and not greedy. Just be smart. Allow your guys to make plays. That's what Griffin has done so far. It's about 19. They need for the first down on second down. And if they don't get a thing, then you could potentially see a timeout used by Texas. Little screen, Finley, good call. And the ball pops free, out of bounds. Shot from Christian Scott, the safety, a junior out of Skyline High in Dallas. I like the call, it's a safe call when you're backed up well behind the chains. And if you can dial it up against an aggressive defense, a lot of times you can gain a lot of yards. Finley gets going, but Christian Scott filling in the alley inside out keeping his hat on the ball and late in the play it pops out but out of bounds and now a third and ten situation for Baylor Robert Griffin at one minute left in this half you do not want to make a mistake and throw the ball late or force it over the middle all the timeouts up for both still here comes the heat on Griffin and there goes Williams down the middle untouched little slant Broke the tackle, touchdown banner. 59 yards for Terrence Williams. How quickly it can happen with a banner Bears and Robert Griffin. Baylor's success offensively is based on space and athleticism. And when you get a one on one situation, all you got to do is break one tackle on the outside. And you got the ability to take it all the way to the end zone. And Terrence Williams with a terrific catch using his hands not allowing the ball to get to the body and takes it all the way 59 and now the extra point tacked on and Baylor the quick strike after they were backed up behind the chains seven plays 69 yards and a gutsy call on fourth down pays off for Art Bryles give him credit because all of a sudden it could be as you mentioned a very short field for Texas if they got the stop instead now a little surge of energy for Baylor at the end of the first half. Williams fourth touchdown of the season from Robert Griffin who now ties the Baylor record for touchdowns in a career and this ball was a strike on third down the quarterback has got to make a play he sees the pressure he stands in knows he's going to get hit delivers the ball on the frame of Terrence Williams and then it's mono a mono he breaks a tackle and he was gone as soon as that tackle was broken you could see it from up here Joel there was nobody left and it's tough for a safety let's face it one on one coverage especially when that blitz go because you you know you're the last line of defense you don't know whether to play the ball or play the man it's third down it's third and ten you don't want to get beat Terrence Williams got to credit him continuing to, to run with high knees breaking the tackle but Griffin started out with a terrific pass. It'll be Malcolm Williams on the far side of the little pooch kick short field again and Williams up to the 38. Interesting. 39 seconds left and enough time to get into field goal territory. Yeah, I gotta say you, you cannot pooch the ball inside of a minute because now you're allowing them to potentially go down and kick a field goal. We saw Justin Tucker from 49. He kicked it over the uprights. It'll be second make it first and 10. Gilbert flushed out of the pocket and out in the flat. It's taken in by Whitaker. Short game, but saving a timeout, stopping the clock at the 45. So the first half, basically, great field position for the Texas Longhorns, and they failed to capitalize, settling for three field goals. Well, in a two-minute situation, this is why you do not pooch kick or hit that little floater over to the sidelines. All Texas really needed to do was go 21 yards. They started on their 39. I believe they only need four more yards to run Justin Tucker out there for about a 55 or 56-yard field goal, and we can see he has the leg based on the kick earlier in the game. Protection holds up for Gilbert, but now it's deflected and falls incomplete. Break for Texas. It'll bring up third and four, though. As you said, they know they need still a few more yards with 16 seconds left. Active hands in the front four for Baylor. Phil Taylor. Big Phil Taylor, 340 pounds, 6'4, gets his hands up, gets his big mitts on the football. Is able to bat it down. That's exactly what you need. Anytime your defensive line can make a play in a two-minute situation, boy, that is a huge plus. How about a vertical at 340? <laughs> that's, that's athletic. <laughs> now on third down, critical. Gilbert can run for it. Instead, he'll throw for it, and he gets the first down. Going down to a knee, it should be down already. 
and it will be on the grab by John Childs. Texas should use another timeout right here. They've got two on the board. 21 yards on the reception. Catches it with his knee down. That's ruled down, but a strike from Garrett Gilbert. I like how he steps up in the pocket, and that is a disciplined route from John Childs. Being at the throw spot on time, one or two yards outside of the hash. That's what Garrett Gilbert is expecting from the pocket. That's where Childs ends up at the conclusion of the play. And now Mac Brown's team is set up for yet another field goal. It'll be a 40-yard attempt by Tucker, who's three for three tonight. Just hit a 49-yarder. And this one on target again. So we're all even basically it's a 12 10 lead but with somebody ex as explosive as Robert Griffin Texas fortunate they are up by two could have had touchdowns so settled and got four field goals as we head downstairs to Jim Knox Knoxie all right thanks Joel coach you got to be happy the way your team responded after that quick strike by Robert Griffin you came back got the go ahead field goal we are Jim we're playing hard Baylor's playing hard it's a great football game kind of reminds you of the old Southwest Conference as you look back doesn't it? Uh, what what we saw is we blitzed on third and ten very little time left we We're gonna call timeout after that play and hope we could get a drive at the end We missed the tackle great play by Baylor really proud our guys responded and came back and got three points We still got to score some touchdowns to win. They're gonna score some points. We've gotten down there We're moving the ball, but we got to make some plays when we get in the red zone. All right, thanks for the time Appreciate it should be a good one in the second half half time in Austin, Texas Texas leading Baylor 12 to 10 up next McDonald's halftime show with Rick Renner and Gary Reasons right after this quick timeout. Saw a little bit of everything in the first 30 minutes of play and a big showdown in the Big 12 South has Texas on top over the Baylor Bears by 2, 12, 10. Welcome back once again, Joel Klatt, Joel Myers, Jim Knox down to the sideline. Uh, wasted opportunities. They didn't capitalize Texas in the first 30 minutes of play. And then a lack of balance in the first half for Baylor. Well, and, and Baylor had been rushing the football very uh, effectively coming into this game, but you got to credit Texas's defense and their speed on the outside. They're able to cover it in space, and they've limited the big play except for one. That's that Baylor touchdown that was scored. But I have a feeling now in the second half, you're going to start to see Baylor try to run the football and assert themselves in the running game just a little bit more. Only nine yards uh, rushing but for Texas they've had their opportunities to both gain turnovers and score points and they've done neither so they've got to take advantage of those opportunities and start making some plays in the second half looking at the Academy Sports and Outdoors right stuff leaders and the guys who made the plays Robert Griffin of course with that big pass to Terrence Williams but maybe the lack of big play hurt Texas more than anything else the explosive play so we are ready for the start of the second half of the Longhorns who deferred Took their option to the second half. Will have it. You see the finish strong for the Baylor Bears. Is that going to be the case? They're down by two. DJ Monroe waits for the Parks kick, and now they go deep after the two kind of pooch in the first half that did work and gave Texas short fields. A couple of minutes ago, Jim Knox caught up with Art Bryles. Coach, just about dead even. You guys trail by two and a half. You're doing a nice job keeping the Longhorns out of the end zone. What'd you tell your team at the break? Well, we, you know, we got to just play better. We, we kind of shot ourselves in the foot a little bit offensively. I think our defense is really playing well, and we got to get better field position. They've had good field position. We hadn't. We got to swing that part of it. We got to have a big stop right here to start the second half, get the ball back, and go score. Right, thanks for the time, Coach. All right, let's see if the defense does hold up. And what about adjustments as well for Greg Davis and his offensive unit with Garrett Gilbert at quarterback. And Gilbert in the first half, 7 of 14, 52 yards. Now maneuvering his way out of the edge and paying for it. What a pop by Francis on Trey Newton and Leander over there. And Byron Lander, rather, the strong safety. His nickname, and it's appropriate, it is Crash. Francis was there as well. And Lander, the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week a couple of weeks ago against Colorado with an impressive hit on the first play of this half. Gilbert waiting for Kirkendall to turn around. It's a short game beyond the 25 with a flag late. Hit was made by Mikhail Baker out to the 26. Personal foul, face mask on the defense number five. 15-yard penalty, first up. Well, that's a backbreaker instead of third and four. Big Markov early. 
downstairs is Jim Knox. What's the latest? Uh, some bad news for the Longhorns to start this second half. Big offensive lineman Michael Yui out the rest of the game with a knee injury. That's going to hurt him. That's his starting left guard, the senior, a two year starter out of Kilgore, Texas. On second and 10. It'll be Gilbert, zone read, and Garrett Gilbert breaks the tackle. Down the sideline, gets another block from Williams, and out of bounds. So when you least suspect it, a guy that does not run the football all that much, he pulls off the surprise. 25 yards. I love Greg Davis giving Gilbert the option. They've just run the ball so effectively. The defensive end crashing down, fakes out even our camera guys, and then Gilbert on the edge showing you some athleticism. And now Texas trying to up the speed of the game, the tempo of the game at the line of scrimmage all already. Double tied in. And the load. Tony Johnson, better than 250, 255. Up the middle, powers his way for three. Started back at the 20. Opening drive of the second half. Joel Myers, Joel Platt, Jim Knox in Austin, Texas. And Garrett Gilbert, can he find some momentum after the failures of the first half? Hitting only 50% of his passes and failing to take advantage, even Mac Brown said it, of great field position. Well, this is exactly what Art Bryles did not want to see, telling Jim Knox uh, he needs his defense to get off the field and provide the Baylor offense with some field position. Texas has gone right down the field now, entering the red zone. Holding him up and off his wide receiver. It ate alive the wide out. Marquise Goodwin on that side. It was a hot one. He turned around and it was up around his backs. This is a primary example of a young quarterback not understanding the back shoulder throw. And if we freeze it right there, when the wide receiver is pressed all the way to the sideline by the defensive back, that ball's got to be thrown on the back shoulder so that he can turn, give his frame to the quarterback, rather than lead up the field. That's too hard. There's, there's too little of a space to catch the ball as a wide receiver and throw the ball as a quarterback. Garrett Gilbert will start learning that as his career moves on. Third and seven, here comes the heat. He can run for the first down. Now can he get to the goal line to the five? Yes, touchdown, Texas. Gilbert with runs of 25 and 20 yards. Key the opening drive of the second half of the Longhorns. This is exactly what Texas needed is someone to step up and make a play. Baylor gets burned on the blitz. They're running the 23 Mike coverage or two Tampa when the Mike linebacker runs with the vertical route in the middle of the field. And as soon as he vacates his area, the quarterback has all sorts of daylight to run and Gilbert ultimately gets in the end zone. Justin Tucker for the point after and now a nine point lead the biggest of the game for the Longhorns trying to snap a two game home field losing streak opening minutes of the second half. Garrett Gilbert 67 yards passing 63 rushing. It is a very strange Halloween Eve. They need him to step up. Every there's a point in every young quarterback's career where you got to step up and be a leader. And maybe this is that point or juncture for Garrett Gilbert. Notches in your belt, scoring the touchdown, leading your team down the field. Baker, a serious collision. Just past the 15. Seismologists are giving us an update. It's out to the 17, maybe the 18. And that's where Baylor is going to have their first drive of the second half. And unfortunately, you can see the results of that. So Baylor is going to have it in their own 31. And that's ties for the best start for a drive, field position wise, the Bears and around the big hole. Finley down the seam. Will anybody get him? Finley inside the 30. It looks like he's gone. He is. Touchdown, Baylor. 69 yards for Jay Finley coming up the record setting performance of last week. And the speed with which he hits this hole is what is so key. As soon as you find it, you get through there north and south. And Finley takes it all the way in for a touchdown. What an explosive run. Man, this Baylor offense, they can strike in a hurry. The point after is good by Aaron Jones so the big plays and I mean huge plays that a 69 yard touchdown run and don't forget 
at the end of the first half final minute of 59 yard TD pass by Griffin and that's our what a burger what a play by Jay Finley you got to be decisive when you hit the hole as a running back and then you have to have the explosiveness to also get to the end zone and Finley showing you that ability after a long run for a touchdown last week 82 yards against Kansas State comes back with another long run against Texas and the explosive nature of this Baylor team is why you have to score touchdowns and not kick field goals when your offense has great field position and you're moving it into their into their red zone. Texas settling for too many field goals and now Baylor striking quickly for the second time of the night. What a game we've got going now as Baylor's trying to win at Texas for the first time since 1997. That is sudden change. Back deep. It is going to be taken. Monroe is back there along. And breaking tackles is the wide receiver as he takes it across the 20, 21, out to the 22. And put down right at the 22 is Malcolm Williams. Yeah, you know, as we look at this touchdown, the safeties are spread so far apart outside the hash and then almost all the way to the field hash. And as they approach the line of scrimmage, this close safety, and I believe that's Christian Scott, runs himself out of the play. Gets way too close to the line of scrimmage. When you're the last line of defense, you've got to hold your ground to be disciplined and not get yourself out of position. So undisciplined football from Texas leads to the long, long touchdown from Jay Finley. Texas now deep in their own territory. How do they respond? Newton barely gets out of the backfield. He stopped after maybe a half yard at the most. And we'll see now how Texas deals with adversity. Because all of a sudden, Baylor shocks them on their home field. Maybe doubt in the back of their mind inside of four left in the third. You got to continue to stick with the run game. It's been successful for you if you're Texas. But now you have to open it up off of the run game. Include Gilbert Moore on the zone read package. Start to throw a little play action pass in the pocket and not outside of the pocket, taking your shots down the field. Call it second and ten. Monroe, the decoy. Middle of the field, tight end, can't hang on, picked off and going the other way, Antonio Johnson. Look out, here come the Bears inside the 15. On the deflection, the senior from Waco sets it up. He read that perfectly over the middle, and there was a lot of congestion. What concentration from Antonio Johnson to get this interception. They try to roll out of the pocket, but the speed from Baylor has been there all night. And Tim Atchison, the senior from Coppers Cove, Texas, comes up with a big hit on Greg Smith. An illegal hit, a safe hit, lowering that target like people in football have been talking about for two straight weeks. And Johnson coming up with the interception. And now Baylor back in business after the long touchdown inside the red zone with a first down. So Atchison set it up with the pop. Ganaway in the backfield after the long run by Finley. Out of the zone read, Robert Griffin breaks the tackle, scrambles and loses it, but he's already down at the five. Acho almost had him at the line of scrimmage. It's up to Muschamp's defense now to hold him to three. Well, and Sam Acho has played the zone read so well tonight, keeping his shoulders parallel, and that's why Griffin has to ultimately ride to the line of scrimmage even longer. You saw him ride that running back even longer to try to pull that ball out and gain positive yards, which he does, and he shows you his athleticism getting inside the five. Umpire came up real quickly. Now Griffin, he's ready to go as they set on second and four at the five, looking for the lead. Not there for Ganaway, the junior from DeKalb, Texas. It'll be third and four from the same spot. Downstairs, Jim Knox. Hey guys, right now, Jay Finley not in the game. He was on the trainer table. They were working on his hamstring. It's gonna be interesting to see if he gets back in. He looks like he will be, but right now, he is not in the game due to that hamstring problem. No, Knox, are you taking the training table for your voice? A little bit, Joel. Okay, Just a little bit. all right. <laughs> we need an injury update for Jim Knox. It'll be third and four at the five. And the Longhorns stop him here. Hold him to a potential three. Griffin by design. It's his call. Cutting it back. And he's going to be short of the first down. So put him down to the two. Needed to get close to the one. 
So the struggles continue inside the red zone for the Baylor offense. We've seen them be explosive and score from distance, but this is where they have a hard time, and it's because the field condenses. They are predicated on space, and they beat you in one-on-one -on -one matchups. At this point, you don't gain a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups because the safeties don't have to play far from the line of scrimmage, and the horizontal game is usually taken out of it. Art Bryles, I don't disagree. This is too important. They're going to call a timeout. I know it's early in the second half, but he is going to stop it to set things up on fourth and a yard. <laughs> Here it is, fourth and a yard from the two. Griffin got the first and goal. He is put down inside the one, but he got the first down, I'm almost certain. They say the ball came free. Griffin, man, the Bears say he was already down. Man, I believe that's the call anyway. Yeah, he just had to get it inside the one. He's inches away from the goal line, so it was the appropriate call. But it should be first and goal there. It all started on the pick by Antonio Johnson. Atchison with a big hit. Johnson off the deflection. And now first and goal, Baylor. So the two for two on fourth downs. They were expensive, those, those timeouts. Let's see if it pays off. Over the top. Did he get in? No. Boy, pretty good scrum going on. Robert Griffin denied again. And, and like a fighter, those are some pretty good body shots. Yeah, absolutely. He tries to go over the top, which is so tough. And, and correctly, they're going to call him down right about you know four inches, five inches away from the goal line. This is a great time to fake the run and get Griffin up out in space and a run pass option. Won't get there again unless he gets a second effort. No whistle yet. They have, now they finally blow it dead. They're waiting. Forward progress, you can see where it's going to be marked. This is precious real estate. It absolutely is, and Will Muschamp knows it. Art Bryles knows it. And the 100,000 here at Darrell K. Royal, Texas Memorial Stadium, they know it as well. As the cl clock is dwindling down, in the third quarter and the Texas defense urging the fans to get in on this one third and goal Baylor has to get in the end zone you cannot settle for a field goal in this situation they're going to have to settle for the opposite end that's the end of three which is smart because they were going to the close into the stadium come down here where the sound is not quite as much of a factor what a good one of the big 12 South. Texas by two, but that lead in jeopardy when we come back at the end of the third, 1917 Longhorns. And you're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. It's the start of the fourth in Austin. Welcome back once again. Our Jack of the Box game summary. Texas still fairly inconsistent, Joel Glatt, offensively. They have been, but they have been sparked by Garrett Gilbert and what he's been able to do on the ground a career high 76 rushing yards but the big play has hurt Texas from Baylor those two big touchdowns have what put them in this situation now third and goal for Baylor and they've got Phil Taylor in the backfield the dive on the quarterback sneak no word yet and where will they put it touchdown banner they have taken the lead For the third straight snap, they go with the quarterback sneak. Got to keep churning your feet and get great push from the offensive line. And Robert Griffin is at the bottom of that pile somewhere with the football across the goal line. It's hard to know exactly where he's at, but he's under there somewhere. He's across the goal line, and now Baylor takes the lead on Texas, 23-19. So Baylor, you saw Art Bryles say two right away. That had to be one of the longest time-consuming 11-yard drives I've ever seen. <laughs> Three straight quarterback sneaks, two timeouts. <laughs> it took, it seven, took a while. Seven plays, 11 yards, and it took better than three and a half minutes. Now for two. Ganaway in the backfield. It'll be Griffin looking to K-Rod, and he can't hang on. Garon Johnson available. It was there. 
And it stays a four point Baylor Bear lead. Looking for their first win in Austin since 1997. And the Bears lead at the opening minute of the fourth. Welcome back to Austin. Hey, Baylor just taking a 23 to 19 lead against the Texas Longhorns. Thank you, Sam Knox. DJ Monroe will take the short one at the 16. Looking for a lane. Man, he'll be dropped shy of the 30. Gonna give it on a little counter action. Man, dropped for a loss. DJ Monroe. Byron Lander's been all over the place. A strong safety. He leads the Bears and stops. He's a senior from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Yeah, came in with 76 tackles. That was good for third in the Big 12. Gilbert out of the gun. Flushed out. Gene Petit's forced him. Gilbert running for his life. And gets out of bounds after he's pushed out by Antonio Johnson. So right now the difference, the pick by Johnson, the touchdown, a four-point lead. And up until that point, Texas had not turned it over. And that's what they came in as a point of emphasis, creating takeaways. And they already had two tonight, but they gave it away. And Baylor, you got to throw, you know, a storyline in this game is the Baylor secondary because they've covered down the field very good. Garrett Gilbert has had time. He just has not had people open down the field. You got to credit this secondary for the Bears. I think they've played sensational. And that's without Chance Casey, the starting cornerback. Now, Gilbert stepping up, and Childs has it. He lost it. Incomplete. It was there. But with Atchison on his back, he pried it loose. Childs still down. Looked like Gilbert's arm was hit as he moved up in the pocket. It was kind of a fluttering pass. Childs tries to bring it in. It was close. That's a that's a tough catch. It was it was probably losing it all the way down though. And fortunately, Childs back up. It looked like Phil Taylor had the pressure on the quarterback. Yeah, and so uh, the ball definitely was tipped or his arm hit or something in the pocket. Gilbert trying to avoid the rush, but credit the front seven for Baylor. They've gotten after him in this drive, putting him behind the sticks. Chris Burke waits back for the punt. Man, Tucker handling both plays kicking and punting duties. The end over ender. And the fair catch back at the 15. So a long field, but just the same. Baylor on top. Three minutes into the fourth in Austin. Now the heat is on Texas. Finley in the backfield. And a different mentality. Robert Griffin getting the block from Finley and into the secondary he goes. Breaking a tackle and a face mask and a flag. And it's coming across the 40 and tack on some yardage there. Emmanuel Acho doing anything he could to get to Robert Griffin. Personal foul. Face mask on the defense number 18. 15 yard penalty. First down. This is what's so tough about Baylor is you can do your job all night long, all night long, and Sam Acho has done a terrific job. He squeezes too far one time, one time, and Griffin gets the edge, plus the block in the backfield from Jay Finley, the senior from Texas, sealing Acho inside, allowing Griffin to get the edge, and then the world-class hurdler races down the field for another first down. This is such an important drive for Baylor. A touchdown here with the ineffectiveness of Texas to score touchdowns could ultimately put this game away. Now, looking at a third and 10. Slides to Luby right in front of the Longhorns bench. And over the middle, get the first down of the quick hitter by the speedster. It's taken in by Kendall Wright. Just a slant action. This is a quarterback that understands what's going on on the field. Here comes the cover zero blitz, leaving the middle of the field wide open. This is a side adjust route, what we used to call a looky route. And there's Kendall right in the middle of the field. And as a quarterback, you get the ball, you set up tall, deliver it on the frame, and move the sticks. Five minutes into the fourth. They can't slow down Griffin now, starting back at his own 15. It's a first and 10 of the 31. Acho rips down Griffin. So Finley tried to take it, and there's a guy who <laughs> succeeded just a little here. Sideline disappointed so far, but knows with the comebacks that he orchestrated, Chase McCoy. 
that there's plenty of time left. Uh, this is such a quarterback oriented game and that's why Baylor has a lead right now. That's why Baylor is ranked and Texas is not is because they've got Robert Griffin. The guy is a sensational player. And of course Colt McCoy on the sideline. That's why Texas was so good for four years. That's why they won a national championship with Vince Young and they were in the game last year with Colt McCoy. So now Griffin out of the gun on second and ten. Still with Finley in the backfield. Finley trying to bolt and down low they had him. That was Emmanuel Macho, the junior from Dallas. He couldn't scramble away. And, uh, Finley hobbled a little bit. You can tell he is not 100% out there. Not 100%. They were working on his hamstring a little bit earlier. After that long run for a touchdown, he might have pulled up a little bit lame, but. Boy, this Texas defense understanding the importance of this drive and what they have to do to get off the field, not only to hold them to a field goal, but possibly off the field with no points for Baylor. And they get the 10. Over the middle, they'll get more than 10. Down the middle, touchdown, Kendall Wright. 30 yards. No safety in the neighborhood. The big play again from Baylor and just a dime from Robert Griffin. Blake Gideon taking off into the slant area, thinking that that ball is going to be thrown shorter than it was. And Kendall Wright with great concentration, catching it with his hands and running for a touchdown. Extra point from Aaron Jones is perfect, and they are stunt in Austin. So Baylor all-time record established tonight by Robert Griffin. He shatters the books for the Bears who lead by 11. They are stunned right now in Austin. Bears on the touchdown of 30 yards to Kendall Wright with an 11-point lead. As back deep, it'll be Monroe stacking up with Malcolm Williams. Ben Parks will kick it away for the Baylor Bears. And boy, already six and two and in the top 25. This would be huge for the Baylor program. High one, Monroe. Trying to make a miss and a flag with a block in the back. It looked like it may have been a running made for the backfield with a block in the back, Fozzie Whitaker. During the return, block in the back. Number 28 of the return team. 10 yard penalty. First down. It was Whitaker. So the Heat on the young quarterback, Garrett Gilbert, with Trey Newton in the backfield. Here comes the blitz. It eludes the pressure momentarily. And now, coming back out the bottom is Mike Davis. Davis has the first down across the 30. Give Gilbert credit. As we look back on the touchdown, what about the safety? Well, here's Blake Gideon. He's a single high safety, which means he's got the deep third responsibility. He tries to gamble on the eyes of the quarterback, Robert Griffin, and go for the slant route as he takes off for that alley. As soon as he misses the pass, there's no one left deep for the Texas defense, and Kendall Wright scores easily once that ball clears Gideon's head. Underneath the tight end. And they'll give up that play because of the time. And Lander applies the hit. And also remember, when we talk about the difficulty for Texas making up this kind of deficit, 11, six of their eight games this year, Joel, they've got two touchdowns or less. Exactly. And they've, they've struggled putting the ball in the end zone. And a lot of that has to do with the fact their offensive line has not played well. You've seen the pressure that Garrett Gilbert has been under all night. Dismal numbers on third down. Gilbert's got a ton of time. And a wide open receiver, good one. Drive is still alive, and so are the Longhorns. Down to the 36. And like clockwork, the front five give you time. And what can you do? Go down the field. Get the sticks. The zone coverage cannot hold up this long when Garrett Gilbert can take a couple of hitch steps and then get the football down the field to Marquise Goodwin. Johnson back into the backfield. Gilbert calls the quarterback draw. For the most part, they stayed at home on that play, though. Takes it down to the 32, gain of only four. If you're thinking about it, when we talked about it the first time since Mac Brown took over, consecutive home losses. 
That's Cody Johnson in the game. He picked up a great block on Antonio Johnson that allowed Gilbert to get positive yardage. But this is the time in the game where you're, where you're always going to have two safeties back. And the part of the field that you have to be able to exploit is the middle of the field. Those intermediate zones and vertical seams right down the hash mark with guys like your tight end. Earl Patan never left his position on that one. Now it's out to the playmaker. Can he break a tackle? Yes, he can. Mike Davis, the true freshman. This is the one guy that we've been told by the staff that really has home run ability. Yeah, he does. He's a, just a true freshman, but he's coming into his own on that last play. And I, I like the fact that you get him the ball in space. They try to run a pressure, and Tim Atchison doesn't get to his spot soon enough to safety. If you're going to blitz, you got to roll that safety up so he's covering the flat sooner. He's late, and the result is a first down. First down of the 19. Cody Johnson. Back to the line, and that is it. Last time, Texas lost three consecutive games at home. You got to go back 22 years. Yeah, and, 1988, and the, and the head coach was David McWilliams. And the tempo and the sense of urgency, Joel, right now, it's got to pick up. You're talking about 520 and counting now in this game in the fourth quarter. You can't take this much time between snaps. They started back at the own 16 on second and 10. Gilbert. Underneath to the tight end Matthews with little yardage only down to the 15 for four So four down territory everywhere although they do need two scores So you've got to get a field goal out of it and then potentially a touchdown and a two-point conversion It's Boy. always tough to chase points. That's why when you have the opportunity you got to get into the end zone So now a huge opportunity third and six a young quarterback has got to make a throw in this situation Pocket holds up, and it's available over the middle once again, Davis. He comes alive late in the contest. He has really helped this drive, and it's down to a first and goal to the six. The true freshman from Dallas, Texas, what a smart play, settling down in a zone and giving his quarterback his frame, turning and giving him a big frame to throw to. That enables Garrett Gilbert, who did have great protection, to step up and throw it accurately for a first down. It's first and goal to the six. Cody Johnson, he'll get it. And yeah, won't go far. Inside the five, down to the four. Again, taking a lot of time off the clock. Let's see if they get up to the line in a hurry this time. Too conservative. You've got to score a touchdown. Time is an absolute factor in a two possession game. Now, second and goal inside of four minutes to play. Keeping it on the ground. Same result. And it's rare when you hear this in Austin in the last 13 seasons. Timeout has been taken. The first of the second half by Mac Brown and the Longhorns. They're desperate and they're down by 11. 3.48 to play, and the last thing Texas needed was a 14-play, five-plus-minute drive, but that's what they put together as they look at third and goal now. They put it back into play inside the four of the Baylor Bears, started all the way back at their own 16-yard line. They needed a quick strike. Gilbert on third and goal, out of the reach. Good coverage on Kirkendall. It looked like the tight end over to the right side was available. Potentially, you're trying to run him to the flat. Greg Smith is going to take off to the flat and run a bit of a crossing route with the top two receivers. The corner did sit, so I see why Garrett Gilbert got off of that read. The corner stayed wide outside of the hash mark, but really, the questioning I'm going to do is on first and second down, just running the ball, taking time off the clock, not getting in the end zone, not giving yourself an opportunity to maybe throw three times into the end zone, get yourself three chances to score, and now Tucker's got to attempt another field goal. And the chances, that's the key. You see all those field goals for Justin Tucker. This is like an extra point at 21 yard or he gets it. So now it's a one score game. If they can get a two point conversion just get the ball back. There's no guarantee though with Robert Griffin that they can get it back against a, a team that's top five offensively in the nation. So they are stunned to say the least because ever since Mac Brown took over they have not experienced adversity quite like this. It was 15 plays, 81 yards, and it took just about five minutes off the clock. Back deep. It'll be Mikhail Baker. Along with Leander Sampson. And Baker ought to stay there. And he will.
smart play. Finley takes his shot. Ball security is the key now. And they'll keep it on the ground. It'll be second and 10 from the 20. Two timeouts left, three and a half to play for Texas. And at this point, Robert Griffin has to be aware of the play clock. It's right underneath the goalpost at the far end zone. Two clocks right on the left and right hand side of the goalpost. Do not snap this ball. If the play clock and game clock are running, you snap it inside of five seconds. He is taking his time. See, he's wired to you. It's in his helmet. He doesn't have his coordinator in his helmet. Now, inside of five, here we go. Second and ten. Finley again. Man, getting him low, Keenan Robinson. So now, Texas will take a timeout with good reason. Man, it started very slowly for Baylor in the second half, but they picked it up. They absolutely did, and with the big play. And, and, and also a short field in the middle off the interception by Antonio Johnson. Last time they won here, well, Art Bryles wasn't around. It was back in 1997. They won it by two. And they won in Austin 23 to 21, November 1st of 97. Ricky Williams running for 244 yards. Didn't make any difference, though. Quarterback Jeff Watson leading the Baylor Bears to their last win in Austin. They've only got eight overall in a series that started back in 1901. So it's already been a major accomplishment for Art Bryles and his squad. They're six and two, bowl eligible for the first time since 95. A lot of firsts since back in the early 90s. But boy, would this be icing early with a lot of things to accomplish still. In fact, only four and 67 against the Big 12 South. And now it's coming into the conference. That's, that's right. And, and finding that level of success now. Biggest play of the game, third down opportunity. Griffin looking for the slant and the collision course. Gideon and Aaron Williams. Are they okay? It didn't have a chance to be completed. It was thrown at the feet of the wide receiver. Yeah, it was. You saw that collision from up here before it occurred. Boom. So Aaron Williams, good news for everybody, not just Texas Longhorn fans. Came on a third down, so believe it or not, Texas is going to get the football back. But that is very secondary. And uh, you know the unimportance of of the game all of a sudden, you know, in a, in an instant perspective, adjusted for a hundred plus thousand here in Austin. And now Baylor to punt the football away. 249 left, Joel. Texas down by eight. Curtis Brown back to receive this punt, and they should get fairly good field position, although Baylor's punter, Epperson, he's hit some beauties here tonight. Two-time All-Big 12 performer, Epperson. Pressure came, and he delivers. He sends out a magnificent putt, and it's put on the ground by Curtis Brown again. He Tried to pick it up and run with it. The loose ball, the scramble continues. And who's got it? Did Baylor come away with it? They're saying they've got it. That should do it if they do recover the. And they do. Second fumble of the night for Curtis Brown after a 69 yard punt by Epperson. And an angled punt forcing Curtis ba Brown to run all the way to the sidelines. Flag now on the field with some helmets off. So there'll be some penalties now on Texas. But that was caused by the punt. Curtis Brown sprinting backwards and, and angled almost like a center fielder into the gap. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number three, Texas, at the distance of the goal. First down. Trey Hand, who's been in the middle of things on specials. We saw him earlier in the game. He was the one who covered it, and it goes down to the eight of the Longhorn. Well, they had their opportunities. Curtis Brown had his opportunity right here to just fall on the ball, and then it's continued to be bobbled. Few Texas players have their hands on it and are unable to secure the ball. All you got to do is fall on it. Possession is primary in that case, not gaining yards. So 
They look counted down, and you think they're celebrating about what 90 miles away at the most in Waco? I think I'm going to health camp for a shake tonight. <laughs> <laughs> On the circle. It's official. That's it. Baylor has done it. They have upset the Texas Longhorns, winning here for the first time since 1997. They have shocked the Texas Longhorns and 100,000 faithful tonight at Memorial Stadium. Joel, the, the plays by Robert Griffin, the three consecutive touchdowns in the second half, they delivered as we head downstairs to Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Joel. Coach, uh, congratulations. Uh, first time Baylor's defeated Texas since 1997. This has to be your biggest win since coming to Baylor. <laughs> well, they're, they're all big, you know, without a doubt. I'm just so proud of our guys' resiliency. You know, we fell behind by nine in the third quarter and just kept fighting, kept believing against a, a really fine football team here at Texas in a great environment here. So I'm I'm really proud of our players and the way they just kept fighting tonight. The record uh, you broke was like the miracle <laughs> on the Brazos, but with well, Grant Trapp. Well, we're just trying to get better each week, Jim, and that's, that's been our motto all year. We, we just think about what we have to do that Saturday. We don't look at the big pitch. We focus on the small pitcher. The small pitcher tonight was beating Texas at Texas. How about the job Robert Griffin did tonight? You guys needed points in the second half, and you got them in the end zone. Uh, best quarterback in America, in my opinion, no doubt. Talk about what it does for this team. What has been the turnaround art on this team? What has been the turnaround since Bel you've been here at Baylor? Belief, attitude, effort, and a very much of a, a hunger, desire to, to excel. These guys, and we have, been whipped around for a while, so hey, they're working hard to make it feel right, and it feels good. All right, congratulations on the big win. Joel? Well, uh, nobody's going to dispute his claim that he's the best quarterback in America. Even Mac Brown said Robert Griffin is to the Baylor Bears what Vince Young was to the Texas Longhorns. He is that much of a playmaker and a guy that changes the game completely. For Joel Flat, Jim Knox, our entire college football Saturday crew, I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us. What a night for Baylor in Austin. Have a great weekend, everybody.